thank you, Zara. Thank you all for coming out today. Thank you, those for who are on Facebook, who are on YouTube. Welcome, welcome. I have a couple announcements. Um, we have the men arise and men of a higher standard coming together. <laughs> Friday night, it'll be men and women. If that's on the 5th at 7 o'clock, open to all. Saturday, it's May 6th, 9 o'clock, men only. So women, make your husband's breakfast before they go. <laughs> we also have the Women's uh, Virtues um, Women's Conference coming. Woo! Where's all the women? This is so exciting. We've been overbooked for two months. Um, please get your money in by April 30th. So that way we'll be ready to go. And okay, so we're gonna open with, I'm gonna open with the scripture. It's Isaiah 45, three. I will give you the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God, of Israel, who summoned you by name. Family, we are the treasures of darkness. We are the things that have been hidden in the dark places that God is pulling on us. Come forward and let his light, when there's a treasure, we bring every light we can to find that treasure. Well, that's the same thing that God's gonna do with us. He's gonna pull and bring all the light. He is the light who has summoned us by name. Let's give glory and honor to our Father. Thank you, Father God. We just come before you, Lord, and we thank you for bringing us out into the marvelous light. We thank you, Father, that you will not stop till every treasure that is hidden in us, Father God, glorifies and brings you honor, Lord. We thank you, we praise you, we ask you that you steer our hearts, Father God, that you stir them, Father God. And we thank you for the word that's going to come forth, that it come forth and it fall on good ground, Father God, that we will hold on to it, Father God, and take it forward, Father God, because you are almighty and all-powerful. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Go Sunday, go Sunday. Come and worship with us. Come and worship with us. Worship your God.
precious blood. Thank you. 
quietly just head back over there. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go ahead and uh, receive our tithe and our offering. Amen. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, raise your hands. Amen. Raise your hands if you need an envelope. These handsy married men will get you an envelope there. The Bible says it's better to give than to receive. We've got to learn that principle to give. You know, right now we're using it for money, but there's a lot of things that it can be used for in our lives. You know, that like we're saying right now, we're surrendering. We give our lives to the Lord. Amen. But right now we just... If, you, if you're tithing, you, you give the tithe to the Lord because you love him and you respect him and you're obedient. You're obedient to the word. If you're doing an offering, it's a free will offering from your heart. What the Lord drops in your heart. Because if it's dropped from in our mind, mm, you know, a lot of us are little tightwads, you know. So we want to give God a tip. But when it comes from the heart, when God is telling you the, the amount, it's going to be more than you probably ever even thought you could give. I'm telling you guys from experience in Jesus' name. But uh, when you give, give out of a grateful heart, out of a thankful heart. Don't give because pastor says. You say because the Lord dropped it in your heart. I'm a tither and I'm a giver. Amen. We give into the kingdom of God. There's a lot of work to be done yet. This place has to get full. Amen. You know, and uh, we're going to do that by reaching out to people and giving. Giving your hearts, giving your, your money, giving your, your time, you know, your ministry. Giving it to, to him that he could have his way with you, all right? So uh, there's the phone number right there. Where's the kids at? Where's the 714? One more time. 714-477-7777. Three, six. Amen. So give unto the Lord. Pray uh, over your offering before you drop it in there. And uh, remember, we receive your offering. We don't take it from you, all right? In Jesus' name.
shoulders, stretch your hands forth. Agreeing with what's said here. children's lives and our home, Father God. Father, I just thank you, Father God, for the blessings that you have given us, Father, that you have given me, Father God, and, and my children, Father God, and I just thank you for each and every one that is here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and release our worship team. Let's give them a good, good round of applause, people. Amen. Cheer him on. Cheer him on in Jesus' name. We're going to go ahead and uh, release our children. Amen. The youth are going out. Amen. Come on, give them a good round of applause. Come on, cheer him on. Cheer him on. Yeah. Amen. If they don't smile at you, smile back at them. You smile at them. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you smiling back there? There you go, yeah. You're smiling? You're smiling? All right. Where are you smiling? All right, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, wow. I'm excited. <laughs> I really am. I really am. I can just sense the, the gladness in my belly, you know. Praise God. Uh, we have one of ours. I don't know where he is. Oh, there he is right there. We have one of our own here. He's going to be ministering today in the Word. I know this brother prays every day. I know he reads every day. I know he meditates every day. And I know he shares every day. Every day he shares the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you guys come expecting, you know, what the Lord has uh, for you from this young man. Come on, let's give Brother Ryan a... A good round of applause in Jesus' name. Bradley. Bradley's the best. Come on. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the house of God, everybody. Hallelujah. Brother Eric. Praise God, my beautiful wife. Ah. Uh, Let's pull these out. Here we go, family. We're just going to get right into it. And if you, if you don't mind, just remain standing, right, as we're going to honor the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're not going to honor me. Yes, we're not standing for me. Yes, we're standing for the king. Amen. Right? That's why we're standing, right? If you feel a little weak in your knees, if you feel a little bit like, ooh, I really like to sit down right now, it's not about Ryan. It's about Jesus. Amen. This is called reverence of the Lord. Amen? Praise God. So I'm going to read real quick Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. So it's going to be a little minute, okay? Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20, please. I thank you, Father. When Jesus came into the region, Caesarea Philippi, he, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist. Some Elijah and others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? <laughs> I love you, Father. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Simon Peter, come on. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, <laughs> and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth 
will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Let's go before the Lord. Father, I thank you and I bless you, Lord. I glorify you and I exalt you, Father. I thank you for using me as your instrument this evening, Father. Just use my voice, Lord. Use my lips. Use my esophagus. Use whatever you need to use in this vessel this evening, Father. Lord, I am just here as your servant. You came and served each and every one of us. And you serve us every day, Father. And I've come, Lord, to serve you this evening, Lord. Use me, Father. Use me like never before. I yield to you. And I remove Ryan completely. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. You may be seated. Thank you, family. Yeah, go ahead. Give God some glory. Give him glory. Jesus. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest. You know, it's just a few, of, a little bit ago. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to throw these, I just wanted to toss these notes. I really did. But I had to get with the Father and ask him if that was me <laughs> or if that was him. You know, because there's times that situations happen and, and, and you see something and, and God gives you a word. God shows you something through situations. God will show you somebody that's hurting. God will show you somebody that's seeking his face. And, and, and what happens is when this happens sometimes and then you have this nice little message put together, then you just want to come <laughs> from the belly. Whoo! But it wasn't God because I asked and I never heard back. So I'm going to read my notes. I'm going to read my notes. Let's go to verse 16, please. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Because Peter confessed Jesus as the Christ, we see in verse 18 that Jesus blessed Peter and gave him a new name. Peter, which was Greek for Petros. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Okay. Verse 18. And also I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Amen. When Jesus spoke this, on this rock I will build my church, he used the Greek word Petra which refers to a collection of rocks. That's what Petra means. It's a collection of rocks. It's a collection of stones. Amen? Amen? So what this means, Jesus didn't say he'd build his church on Peter alone as an individual. No, no, no. He said he'd build it on a huge mass of stones like Peter. Amen? Amen. All right. <laughs> Men and women like you and I who recognize Jesus as the Messiah. That's who he's going to build his church on. Those who recognize him as the Messiah, that he is the Christ. Amen. Yes. So when he's speaking to Peter, he was speaking to us as well. Amen. Who do you say that I am? Jesus. Jesus wants to know. Who do you say that I am? Mike Zuniga. Jesus Wants to know. Amen? Amen? And he wants to know that from each and every one of us here this evening. By joining, by joining all of us into one, unified followers who confess him as Christ, the son of the living God. Let's go to Ephesians 2, verses 19 through 22. Ephesians 2, 19. I don't know how to say two. Not two, but from 19 to 22. Okay. I did it? All right. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Ephesios. Ephesos. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Right before Philippians. <laughs> Just after um, Genesis. And it will be before you get to Revelations. Here we go, 19 through 22, family. Four, 19, here we go. Have given themselves over to the No, no, I'm sorry. Two, two, 19 through 22. Two. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. Ephe okay, that's what I said. Praise the Lord. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens. But fellow citizens. Come on, somebody. We got dual citizenship. Amen. Dual citizenship. I thought only my brother had that because he's from Australia. He's from down under. Eh? Yeah. yeah, he lives up, uh, over there, uh, yonder way. But I thought he was the only one that had dual citizenship. But us, as children of the living God, we got dual citizenship. Amen? Here, come on, America, and in heaven. Amen? With the saints and members of the household of God, Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built, to, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. In the Old Testament, we see in verse 21. Being fitted together grows into a holy temple of the Lord. In the Old Testament, the glory of God was manifested in the temple. That's where God hung out. Amen? Yet today, he's in the new temple, the church. Together, us as believers are the temple of God. Amen? Amen? We all know that here, right? Everybody in here is a Christian because I can see. Everybody in here is a Christian. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So we are the temple of God. Together, us as believers are the temple of God. This means we should always be in alignment with the Christ, with the chief cornerstone. Christians, Christ. Christ, Christians. Amen? See how that goes together? 22, verse 22. Let's read that real quick. In whom you also are being built, I already said it, let's go, dwelling place. Let's go forward. We are meant to display God's glory, yet if we are not aligned with the Christ, then that glory will not be displayed. Period. Period. If we are not lined up with Christ, his glory will not be displayed. You see that, right? How can his glory be displayed if we're not in his presence? If we're not chasing after him? How are we going to be representatives? 2 Corinthians 5.20 says that we're representatives of Christ. That we are ambassadors of Christ. You know, there's, there's other countries that when you go to their country, they'll literally bow down to our president. If our president goes to some of these countries, they'll bow down. Because he's an ambassador of the United States. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. That alone is enough for me. Come on, somebody. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Okay. That's a whole other teaching. I don't know. Go to Matthew 21, 42, please. Matthew 21. Verse 42, and I'm going to be honest with you, family. I get so excited, it's hard to stay on subject. <laughs> you start reading the word a little bit, and man, that just, then you just could go so, like, to a whole other direction with it, you know, but I'm going to do my best, okay? Is that good? That's okay with everybody. Chapter 21, 42, please. Let's read. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in our eyes. Although Jesus was rejected by many of his people, he would be the cornerstone of his new building, the church. 
regardless of how he was rejected, regardless of how he was denied, regardless of how he was pushed away, regardless of how many times they told him no, <laughs> no, he still is going to build his church. Amen? Amen? Jesus is the one who shed his blood for his church. Without him, there would be no church because it wouldn't be able to stand. Amen? Amen. Without Jesus, there is no church. There is no Christians. Okay. With that being said, family, without Christ, you and I won't be able to stand either. I'm just saying. Take my glasses off. That way I don't have to see anybody. Without Christ, you and I wouldn't be able to stand either. Amen? That's for me. Maybe that's just for me. I have tried to stand without the king. And after I've already known the king and tried to stand without the king, I wasn't able to do it. I was a wreck, just a mess. Amen? So I want to encourage you tonight, so don't try it. Don't try it. Just stay with the king. Amen? Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Remain dependent on God. On God, excuse me. Stand tall and remain upright on the solid foundation of the rock, Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. In the construction of a building, a cornerstone is traditionally the first stone laid for a structure, with all other stones laid in reference. A cornerstone actually unites two walls together of a building, holding them together, and helps to stabilize the building's foundation. So without the cornerstone, the building will not stand. Amen? Without Jesus, we won't stand. Amen? It's as simple as that. Okay. Praise God. Let's look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 6, please. Thank you, Father. Coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, come on, you also are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, Jesus, elect, precious. And he who believes in him will by no means be put to shame. By no means. It's just not going to happen. You will not be put to shame if you believe in him. If you trust in him, if you abide in him, amen, you can't go wrong. Amen. Dwelling in the secret place of the most high God. And we shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Psalms 91. Amen. Dwell in their secret place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We are a living, spiritual house of God. That's who we are as a church. A living, spiritual house of God. Where I go. How do you like that, Pastor? No, just kidding. Where I go, he goes. Where I am, he is there. Amen? So if I'm in Walmart, he is there. Right? If I'm in the backyard, neighbors looking over their fence, he is there. Wherever we set our foot upon, he is with us, family. Amen. So I'd say it's safe to say wherever we walk becomes holy ground. I don't know. Is that safe to say, Pastor? Pastor Eric, is that safe to say? Pastor? Thank you. Wherever you walk... Eric Gonzalez becomes holy ground because the king is inside of you. 
the kingdom of heaven dwells inside of us. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. We are the body and he is the head. Physically, we all understand that without the head, we would die. Physically, I think it's four seconds. If you were decapitated, I believe you get four seconds. Yeah, your heart will continue on for about 14 something. I don't know exactly, you know, but, but, but it, your heart can, continues pumping for a little bit. But you got about four seconds without the head. That's the same one in the spirit, family. If, if, if we don't have that head, we're walking around aimless. We're wandering again. And he, he, he put a stop to that when he pulled us out of Egypt in the first place. Amen? Right? So we don't want to wander aimlessly. We got the head, Jesus the Christ. One of us stones here, one of us stones, because we're all living stones. Amen? We just read that? We're, we are like living stones? Okay. One of us stones here cannot make a temple. Not one of you here can make a temple. <laughs> Not one of these living stones here could make a temple. Or even a wall for that matter. Just like one body part can't function without the others. So listen, I'm not saying you don't have what it takes to be everything that God wants you and desires you to be. I'm not saying that. But you can't, with one stone, build a temple. Amen? Amen. You understand that, right? Okay. So, our fingers would be useless without the nerves, the tendons, and the strength of our hands. Our fingers would just be useless. They'd just be... Right? <laughs> Hallelujah. The human hand has 27 bones in it. 27 bones in your hand. You can say, I know, I use my bones. Come on, somebody, on that base. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And 14 of those bones are finger bones. 14 of them are your finger bones. We also have 30 muscles in our hands. Not hands, not plural. One hand, 30 muscles. 30 muscles in your hand working together. Come on, body of Christ, all working together. 30 muscles in your hands working together. Yet, the majority of the time for this hand to operate, it's going to be from your forearm muscles. That's a trip, right? I got 30 muscles right here. But these are the muscles your forearm muscles are the ones that give the first initial boom to your hands. So with that being said, family, you understand, if I start here, then I can go here. I'm going to continue on, right? You see how the story is leading, right? How we need every single part. Amen? And that's the same with the body of Christ. Every single woman and man that is here tonight, that is across the nations, all, every single Christian is needed for the temple of God to advance, for the kingdom of God to go forward. Every single one of us is needed. Everyone is needed. God hurts if one is lost. I hurt if one is lost. Amen? So we're all needed. Praise God. Our bodies are so very complex, consisting of many different and connected parts. Sounds like the body of Christ. <laughs> Here we go again. Right? Our bodies are so complex. And every single part is so necessary. And every single part is connected. Our bodies are connected everywhere. The whole body is connected. Amen? Just like us as the body of Christ. We too are all different, and we are all connected as well. We have a community of believers that Jesus desires we function as one. That's the heart of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. And I'm talking to you in Facebook land and YouTube world as well. 
Jesus desires that we function as one. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? One body, one head. Not this denomination, this denomination, this doctrine, this doctrine. That's not, that wasn't his plan, family. Okay. Verse 5. 1 Peter 2, verse 5. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus. Amen? When God calls us to a task, when there's work to be done in the kingdom, I want you to understand something. He always calls others to come alongside of you. Amen? He will always call others to come right alongside of you. Always, if it's God. If it's God. Sometimes we get some of our own ideas and we try to walk them out and it's just you. <laughs> Nobody's coming alongside of you. It might not be God. There is times that you're going to be alone for a period of time. But if nobody's coming alongside of you for this task that you believe is from God, it might not be from God. Amen? Okay. A lot of different things going on right here with this brother. Wow. I could go so many different directions, family. You know, that's how beautiful our God is, the word of God, and to be in the presence of the king. Uh, he's just always depositing. He's always depositing, like, downloads. Like, they just, sometimes they don't stop. I remember a time in my life, like, I, I wouldn't hear nothing. Sister Connie, I couldn't hear, I wouldn't hear nothing. And even not in sin. Now, when I was in sin, I was in sin. Yeah, I wasn't hearing from God. But I'm talking about not in sin. Coming to the house of God. Doing right by the king. I, I still couldn't hear and then and they're like, where, where are you, Pops? And you're crying out. And, and then the next thing you know, you just wake up one day and he's just like, and he's just, he's just dropping it on you. You know, so sometimes even right here, I'm reading this. I have my notes and phew, I, I could go so many different places. And it's just beautiful, really. It's just beautiful. God no longer needs our sacrifice. He wants our obedience. Come on, somebody. And he doesn't want just obedience. He doesn't want you to just show up and go through the motions. He wants our heart. It's a heart condition. It's a heart condition. It's a heart issue. He wants you to, to desire to serve, desire to be obedient. Amen? It's not just going through motions. Praise God. When we come to unity in our faith as a body, one body in unity of our faith, I believe we'll be a lot closer to being mature Christians. One unity, one body, I believe we will be a lot closer to being mature Christians. I'm not saying that we're not. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying when we come to this point, I'd say we're getting, we've, we've come to a point in our life that we become mature in the things of God. Amen? You know, on the way here, you know, uh, we, I think of that scripture, raise a child up in the way that they ought to go so that they will never depart, right? And we always think about kids. We always think about little ones. <laughs> uh, when I hear that scripture, you know, like, we got to raise these kids up, man, in the things of God, amen? And the Holy Spirit, <laughs> pastor always says, it takes a village to raise a child. Something our pastor always says, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to raise me. Oh, that's funny, huh, Sister Ross? <laughs> Jesus, it takes a village to raise me. It takes a village to raise you, Sister Sandra. It takes a village even to raise Sister Olivia. See, we have a, we're apprentices. We're like in a big apprenticeship program. And Jesus is the one, right? He's the one we're following. So we're learning daily, amen? 
So that when he says it takes a village to raise a child, I'm like, the Holy Spirit put that on me. I'm like, man, I got so much growing up to do. Amen. Come on. So, I mean, I do. I got a lot of growing up to do because because he put that on me. It takes a village to raise you, brother. I'm like, wow. Praise the Lord. And I'm ministering tonight. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. I love you, Father. Quick question. Oh, no. Let's pull up Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, please, in the New Living Translation. God, you guys already got it? Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, who is the head of his body. Come on, somebody. We can't step outside of that. You may get some great ideas, but you better talk to Pops about it. You better get with the Father about it. Amen? Before you walk in anything. Praise God. Next, 16, please. He makes the whole body fit together. Whew, come on. He makes us all fit together perfectly. Perfectly. He's the only one that can do that. None of us here can bring perfection to much. Amen? Some of you guys might be good cooks. Some of you guys might be like really good at mowing your lawn to where you get those nice little lines going and it looks all nice, your front yard. But he's the only one that can bring perfection to anything. Amen? Amen. That's it. Perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. So that the whole body, as each part, <laughs> come on somebody, as each, I can't see it that well. So I need to clean these glasses. As each, oh, turn right here. Thank you, Tomas. Oh, I can see this very good. No, just, you guys are funny. You guys are too much tonight. Praise the Lord. As each part does its own special work. Say that with me. As each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Let's say that together. Healthy and growing and full of love. Come on, somebody. And full of love. And full of love. Because there's nothing you can do in the kingdom and for the kingdom of God without it. Without love, don't even bother. Don't even try and step into it. If it's just an idea without the compassion of Christ and you think you're compelled, that might not be God. Come on, somebody. I'm speaking to the church here tonight. If you think you're compelled and there's no compassion, there's no conviction and there's no love behind it, is it God? Is it God? When you make that phone call and you think you're doing such a service to another brother. Because you got a word for him or, or you know, I just I'm just led to pray with you, brother, or da, da, da. If there's no love and compassion in it, don't dial the number. Come on. We're talking to the church. Don't dial the number because we are representing a king. We're representing a God, the God, the creator of all the heavens and all the earth, the great I am. So for me to try and represent him without him, I can't do it. I can't do it. That's me trying to get some kind of kudos or a little discount on something. I don't know what, what, it, what, what it would be, but it's not, it's not God. Amen. Wow, that's not supposed to be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So look, look at family. Praise God. You know, let, let's have those brothers up here, please. I miss quite a bit, but I praise the Lord. Um, there's a few questions that I have for you tonight, okay? Three questions that I have for each of us here tonight. One, how would you build the house of God? Right? Jesus is the rock. He said, upon, upon this rock, I will build my church. 
My question for you tonight, how would you build it, Pastor Joe? How would you build it, Sister Alejandra? John Rhino? And Pops? How would you build the house of God? Something to think about, okay? I want you to ponder on that. How would you build the house of God? How would you build the church? How would you do it, Hugo? Come on, I know you guys got some great ideas, but how would you do it? As a living stone, this is the third question if you're taking notes. As a living stone, where would you personally want the world to see you placed? Where would you personally want the world to see you placed? When the world comes to the house of God, when we as a church bring Jesus to the world and they come to the house of God, where would you want them to see you? Does that make sense? Real quickly, let's look at the last part of this verse. Matthew 6.18. Matthew 6.18. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. And I also say, say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail Against it. Amen. Amen? Most people use this scripture, this last, last part of this scripture, to indicate that Satan will never overthrow the church. Yes, yes, and yes. This is true. Amen. Satan will never overthrow the church. Amen? Amen. We know this, right, family? Praise God. And we can see that, by the way, you can look at it another time. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, if you're taking notes. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Yet in this verse, it's talking about something different, the, the latter, latter part there. And I'll read it one more time. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Okay, take the scripture down, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Jesus is saying, even though he was rejected by the people, arrested, tried, and found innocent, and then crucified anyway, it wouldn't stop him from building his church. After all that, it didn't stop him from building his church. Amen. You can give God a shout there. I know sometimes I sound intense. It's just, you know, the compassion. That didn't stop him from building the church. That didn't stop him. He continued on in the mission that he was sent. He continued on, on with the call that was on his life. What he was instructed to do in the eyes of his father. He was submitted and surrendered to his father, to the almighty God. So whatever he had to endure, he was going to endure it. And he endured it to the end for you and I. That just blows my mind, Blake. For you, young man, he suffered the way he did. Beaten, 39 cattails. <laughs> You know the cattail? They're illegal, by the way. You can't, you're not supposed to own one, okay? But you could get a cattail. Whop, whop, whop. You could rip wood off. You could slam it into a big wood, whop, and you just pull wood out. That cattail, mm, oh, they were just pulling his flesh out, probably breaking bones, my daddy, on that cross, before the cross. 
That's what they did. He endured. He said, you matter, Josie. Your life is not over yet. Your life matters. You're important to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He loves you. He loves you, Nicholas. He has a plan for you, young man. He endured all of that for you and for me, who took so many years to figure it out, even as a Christian. I went through the motions for many years, John. And I have my bits and pieces here. Three years I was holy. Six months I was a mess. Come on, somebody. Come on. I'm talking about Jesus and Christ. I'm talking about the forgiver of us. Our forg He's forgiven us. I'm talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords. See, sometimes I share things that might be a little bit embarrassing. Ha! He picked me up every single time, Sister Desiree. With his outstretched hand, I'd run back, boom, run right back to the muck and the mire. And then I'd come back to the house of God. And then I'm at the altar, I'm on my knees, I'm just pouring, drenched, crying. And he's watching me still. That's how beautiful he is. He loves us. When we come to that point in our life that we can love one another in that same fashion, sky ain't the limit. Heaven is. Come on, somebody. I said, sky ain't the limit. Heaven is. And that's when <laughs> heaven will be here on earth. Come on, somebody. You missed it. We can have heaven here on earth. That's what my Bible teaches me. Amen? We got some brothers up here. This young man is... He's upset. He's hurt. He's a little bit broken. He's Christian. Christian. I want everybody in here to understand something. This right here, we put this together in 10 minutes. Spirit of God. Christian, 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 Christian. Four Christian men. Four of them know who Jesus the Christ is. Four of them have been saved. They've repented at one point in their life. They turned from their sins and they surrendered and they invited Jesus Christ into their life as their personal Lord and Savior. This young man has turned his back. This young man, he may have came to church and got offended. Maybe he wasn't able to sit where, where he normally liked to sit or where he wanted to sit. And now he's turned his back on God. He's a young man, beautiful young man, but he's turned his back on God now because of an offense. He's turned his back on God, maybe because he came to the church and he wasn't loved on the house of God. Came to the house of God and nobody addressed him. Nobody embraced him. Nobody loved on him. But there was pastors talking to pastors and people waiting in line to talk to these pastors. And this little brother slipped in and nobody loved on him. A Christian loves the Lord. But now he's hurt. And he's turned his back on God. Got another young man over here. You see, he's looking at the cross. He obviously knows where his help comes from. He knows where his help comes from. But if you see, he's also looking to the world because he's struggling within himself. He's struggling within himself like, I don't know. I know you're my help, 
I know I could run back to you, but the world sure do like dancing. Sure do like my little boyfriend. He's a handsome young man, and he's Christian. He's a Christian. He's a Christian. He'll marry me someday. He will. Struggling within himself. In the house of God. He's here. He's here tonight. Somebody's here tonight that's struggling within themselves. And it's hard sometimes just to be here. It's hard to make it here. Every excuse that you can think of comes up. Gas. I'm not even employed. I have no direct income coming in right now. But my gas is taken care of in Jesus' name. He will supply all our needs through his riches and glory when we line up to him. Amen? I got another brother here. Got the word of God under his head, just kind of kicking back, posted. Just chilling. Kind of que sera, sera. He's here, though. He's here. He's made it to the house of God. He's here tonight. He's here with us. But he's just kicking back, man. He's not really, I don't know, let's say he doesn't really want to really connect himself. Because when he gets connected, then there may come responsibilities with that. Do you, do you see? So, so. So he's good with God. He has a relationship. He obviously reads his word, right? Or at least he carries it. We don't know, right? We don't really know. But he's kind of just like posted. Like I got my good seat, you know. I like this church, man. I always have my same seat. You know what I mean? I know I'm comfortable because I know where I sit. I could come and I could just take my seat. And then I could just hear, kick back, hey, what's up? It's kind of cool, kicking back, catching some rays in the middle of church. There ain't no sun coming here, but he's like kind of catching some rays. And then he's just able to leave, right? It's kind of easy, right? You think about it. He, he, he may even think that he's living the dream because God pulled him out of his mess. And he thinks that's enough. God pulled him out of the pain and the hurt, the sorrow, maybe even helped him with some finance to get through some tough times. And he's good now. He's got his girl. He's got his kids. He's got a little place to live. Whoop, they got some new drapes going on. Things are going on. They even had ribeye last night. Come on, somebody. Right? Right? So, so he comes to the house of God, he hears the word of God, he leaves the same. Comes back next week, takes his rightful place, whether it's eating Egg McMuffins in the foyer, whatever it is, and he's cool with that. That's enough. Amen? We got this brother up here. He's a leader. Look at that guy. That's a leader. Come on, somebody. He's a leader. Look at him. It's just him and God, man. Just doing his thing, man. Coming in here, giving directions. Hey, we need this, 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 and that. You need to be over here. You need to be here. Uh, I need you back here. Uh, You know, I need you in the parking lot. He's just doing his thing, man. He's just leading, right? He's been asked to lead. Never been asked to lead before in his life. Maybe never even uh, uh, been asked to do anything outside of his regular work at at work or something. But now he's a leader. He feels good about himself. Amen? He's excited. He's connected. He's connected as a leader. But he's kind of doing his own thing. He too slips in and out. (laughs) He too slips in and out. He comes in. He does church. Hey, Pastor Eric, how are you? you oh, you need a table set up? Sure, you, I got it. Boom, 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 set a table up. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. And then he drives home. Angry. 
drives home angry. Maybe not even looking forward to his wife when he gets home. I don't know. These are just all possibilities. But this particular leader does his own thing. He leads on an island all alone. Leads on an island all alone. He doesn't really have too much time for the people. Because he's busy. <laughs> I'm at the house of God. I got a lot to do. Just give me a few minutes. He's busy. And he's allowed that busyness to disconnect him from the body. And we don't want that. Jesus came to put us all together. We just learned that. But this leader thinks he's okay. He thinks he's okay. It's him and God. He knows a little bit of word. He, he's leading. He, he's, he doesn't necessarily think he's arrived, but he's like, man, I'm good. I'm good. But he, he's not connected with the body. And when we're not connected with the body, we lose some, some power. Because if we're not connected to the, if the head, the head says that we are one. The head says that you and I, that we are one, that we are the church. So if we're not connected as one, are we being re rebellious to the head? We fellowship, we hang out, we eat. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I understand. Turning Point Fellowship actually fellowships. It's beautiful. You guys are a beautiful body of Christ. I'm just putting some scenarios out there, okay? I want you to see. I want you to understand that all these different situations and then some are going on right here in the house of God. So what are we going to do about it? How are you, Nicholas, going to build your church? It's our responsibility, Leonard. What are we going to do about this young brother? Just pass him by? Continue on about what we're going to do? What am I going to do about the man of God? A man of God. But he's posted. He's cool. He doesn't really want to get involved. What am I going to do about it? I just walk on by him? What about this one? This brother's ready to run. What are we going to do? How are you going to build the church? We are his sons and daughters. Together as one, we are the church. Amen? Yes. Praise God. Can we take that next position? Thank you, family. I miss a lot of the service, but Holy Spirit, do your thing. Thank you, Father. I love you, Lord. I thank you and I bless you. I praise you and I glorify you. Father, I thank you for this, Father. This is the house of God. This right here, family, is the house of God. This is the church that Jesus gave everything for. This is the church that Jesus suffered for. This is the body of Christ. This is how we're called to be. Running towards the king. In times of trouble, in great times, we're always running to Jesus. We're always chasing the cross. We need to be at the foot of of the cross family. Amen? And you see these men here. You see these men right here. They're locked. I got you. Come on, I got you. I got you. It's okay, little brother. You're struggling a little bit. Don't worry about that. I got you. And then the next one, he was on his way out. And then little brother was offended. He's first in line because he was loved on. Come on, somebody, I'm talking about love. I'm talking about the love of Jesus. Jesus the Christ is love. Jesus the Christ remembers your name. He knows what's going on in your life. And this is the body of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, my brothers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Stand and give him praise, family. Stand and give him praise. Stand and give him praise. Give him praise. Thursday night, give him glory. Jesus is the king. 
Jesus has been resurrected. He's alive and well. We love you, Father God. We bless you. We glorify you, my King. Hallelujah. If we are not set in place, come on up here, little one. If we are not set in place on the solid foundation of Christ, how will we, how are we allowing ourselves to be built upon? Little one, Junior. Oh, he probably had to go pee-pee toilet. <laughs> Excuse me. He had to use the restroom. I, I, I say that with kids. I apologize. <laughs> Little Juan, so he's not here. Praise the Lord. So if we are not set in place on the solid foundation of Christ, how are we allowing ourselves to be built upon? You guys get that? All right, I had you stand up so you can't take no more notes. If we are not set in place on the solid foundation of Jesus of Christ, how are we allowing ourselves to be built upon? Will you allow your brother to step on you so that he may grow? And I had something else I wanted to show you, but we're not able to do it. Are you willing to be built upon? That's one of the, one of the, probably one of the final questions. Are you willing to be built upon living stone? Right? Because we're a bedrock, stone upon stone, upon stone, upon stone, upon stone. We're a bedrock. We're the ones that make the strong wall for the kingdom of God. And we're the ones that invade the kingdom of hell and take back what's rightfully ours. Amen? Seven times. Seven times, John. But we have to make the decision to do so. We've got to make the decision to do so, family. We must be placed one upon another to be able to become the church Christ shed his blood for. Living stone upon living stone. You and I together in this fight. Amen? Amen. That's the body of Christ. We must continue to do the Father's will with the willful heart to remain on the firm foundation that Jesus the Christ shed his blood for, family. I want to encourage you tonight to keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on, and keep on keeping on, and continue to fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we glorify you, and we exalt you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, Father. I just thank you that this word has fallen on good ground. I know that I know that I know that the soil is ready and that this seed will produce fruit. It'll pr produce fruit. It will literally produce life, Father. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this word, Lord, and I thank you for the kingdom. I thank you for the church that will water this word, not only in voice, but in action. I thank you for the church that will love one another back to life. I thank you for the church that will go the extra mile for one another. I thank you for the church that's willing, available, and ready. We bless you. We glorify you. We give you praise, and we say thank you, Father. Thank you for building your church. Where would we be without you? We love you, and we praise you, and we glorify you, my King. Thank you for continually having your way in our lives, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally. Thank you for being our solid foundation. We glorify you, Father. And we will be the church that brings you glory. 
I will shine, Father. I will do my best to reflect you, Jesus the Christ. That we be the beacons of light. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Okay. Uh, one quick announcement. We got, we, got, we got a mighty man of God coming Sunday. Uh, Pastor Charlie Gallegos will be here ministering in word. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, I know that uh, he's got a word for us specifically. So invite somebody. Amen. Invite somebody. We got to get back on that. There's power in an, invi- excuse me, in an invitation. Amen. Invite somebody. You, you, you never know, you, but, but you're going to have to open your mouth and you're just going to have to invite them. Maybe even give them a ride if possible. Amen. Uh, go and be free, family. We're going to be released, but be free. Free people, free people. Amen. Free people, free people. Be free. We are released. Thank you, YouTube and Facebook land. Thank you, Jesus.